from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Okay, now guess what? Up next, we have a beautiful and talented author, Dominique Mochianu. Is the author of New York Times bestselling. Go, go for the Gold Gymnast series. This is awesome. Is the, oh, wait, uh, we uh, both uh, want to uh, say it because we both love her. I you tell go you. Right ahead, an American my dear. champion. As a member of the women's gymnastic team, she won a gold medal, you guys. At the 1996 Olympic Games. We have an Olympian in the house. That is really special. She now tours the country as an ambassador for the sport, doing clinics and summer camps and speaking with young gymnasts. She, she lives in Cleveland, Ohio with her husband and two children. Please give a very special <laughs> welcome to Dominique Mochiano. Hello. Hello, hello. How's everybody doing today? Did you guys watch the Olympics this summer? Yeah. How about the games? How exciting was it? Yeah. Oh, it was the best. It was so much fun. And for me, it's been 16 years since I've been there and uh, have gone and done many other things. But the Olympics opened so many doors and so many dreams came true after winning a gold medal at the Olympic Games. And one of those dreams was becoming an author and writing a children's book series, something that's near and dear to my heart. So I'm here to talk to you today about that. The Go For Gold Gymnast was an idea that I started to think about when I was pregnant with my first child, who ended up being born on Christmas Day, the best Christmas present ever. So I wanted to write a children's book series that could resonate with gymnastics crowds, that could resonate with the children, and something that was a true account of the sport and the world of elite gymnastics at the junior level. So this is for middle graders, and I'm so excited that we've gotten such a great response from the four-part book series. A lot of things in the, in the book that I write about are a lot of lessons, and I wanted the kids to know that reading this gymnastics book, you're gonna really understand what these girls go through on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm gonna go and walk you through each four of the books and talk to you about that. And while I'm explaining this, I want you guys to think of some really good questions to ask me, because I always love to interact with my audience. And in a little bit, I'll ask you some really, um, I'll ask you to give me some questions and I will answer them, okay? But in a little bit, let me talk to you a little about the books. So book number one is called Winning Team, and Brittany is this main character. Her voice is used throughout the book. She's spunky, she's a lot of fun. She puts her foot in her mouth quite a lot, but she moves to this new gym because she wants to train at the elite level to be an Olympic champion one day. And her goal is to fit in. So she's moved to this new gym club, and she hasn't quite fit in, but she's dealing with issues of feeling accepted. How many of you kids have wanted to be accepted by a group or this clique that you go to a new school and you don't quite know how to fit in? Well, that's Brittany and this character. I've been there too, trust me. I'm the daughter of immigrant parents that were born in Romania. And so I was that awkward kid a lot of times too. I had a lime green lunchbox, ate foods that nobody knew about, was the shortest in my class, and I'd get called shorty and shrimp. So I know what that felt like, but I wanted people to understand that this is part of her story to be accepted and how we can accept others into your world. And sometimes it's hard because you don't know where, you know, you don't know this person very well. But what's really special is the group comes together and the whole story is about friendship and how she tries to fit in at her new gym. And so I think you guys will really enjoy Brittany's character. She's a lot of fun and uh, she has quite a personality. So that's part of book number one. Book number two is Balancing Act. And this is loosely based off of my Romanian heritage and culture. No Noelle is the character in this book, and she's the daughter of immigrant parents as well. And she's trying to make ends meet, and her family's trying to, you know, keep their business alive and trying to pay for her gymnastics classes. And gymnastics can be expensive. For some people who don't know, gymnastics is an expensive sport. So we talk about, you know, also fitting in here with Noelle and her family and being kind of... Uh, 
someone who came from a very modest beginning and modest family who didn't have a lot, but somehow she struggles to pull off her dreams and make things happen because she's one of the hardest and most determined workers in the group. And she realizes that her hard work will pay off one day and that she can accomplish her dreams. And her friends end up throwing a nice fundraiser for her so she can accomplish her dreams. And you'll find out what that is if you read the book. I hope it resonates with you. So that's number two. The next book is Reaching High, and that's the main character here is Jessie. Well, Jessie deals with body image issues, and she kind of has a little bit of trouble figuring out, you know, how to see herself in a positive way. And, and it's, not, um, it's not a bad thing to be in tune with your body, especially as a gymnast. We have to be very fit, and we have to have a very lean physique. But Jessie and... Uh, she goes through a little bit of a hard time battling some insecurities. And we talk about that in this book and how she overcomes it and how her friends help her get over that. And eventually, you know, the course that she decides to take with school and different things in her life and the challenges that come up in her life. But I hope that you enjoy this book as well because this one is, is very special. And in the sport of gymnastics, it's something that a lot of people don't want to talk about, you know, body image and things like that. But I think it's really important for kids to know that that's important and we need to have a healthy attitude toward it and a healthy approach so that you can have a healthy experience in sports and in life in general. So that's book number three. And book number four, Christina is the main character. She's, uh, she's definitely very spunky and got a lot of pizzazz, but her main struggle and adversity is dealing with an injury and also deciding whether she wants to go to college and maybe get a scholarship or does she want to go to the Olympic dream? And when you're a teenager, that, that really, that question comes up a lot because when you're a teenager, you have a lot of things you want to be involved with at school. And so gymnastics takes up a lot of hours after school. It's at least four hours a day, five, six days a week at that point. And so she has to deal with this injury that kind of sidelines her for a while. And she has to figure out what she wants to do with her life. Does she want to be a professional gymnast? Does she want to go to college? And it really gives her some time to think about what she wants to do with her life, and her friends help her get through that as well. But ultimately, all four books are about friendship and how all of the girls help each other through these hard times. And I think you guys will really find that exciting. Now I want to open it up for some questions from the audience. Kids, parents, feel free to ask anything you want. This is your opportunity to ask a question, and uh, I'm excited to interact with all of you. So, yes. We have a question right here. Go for it. Um, I was wondering what it was it like going to the Olympics at such a young age? Very good question. What was it like to be in the Olympics at such a young age? I was 14 at the Olympic Games. Many of you may know that you cannot be 14 years old to compete in the Olympics anymore. After the 96 Olympics, the age requirement changed. You have to be turning 16 the year of the Olympics. So in 2000, that's when all of that changed. So I'm the youngest in history for US women's gymnastics and will always be. So competing, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, competing at that young age, it was, it was a lot of discipline, a lot of hard work, but also very rewarding to put on the red, white, and blue and represent my country and do things that many of my peers and many 14-year-olds weren't doing. So. It was really a, an, a, an amazing experience because I've inspired so many people from that experience. And that inspires me in return because I've been able to impact a generation of children and, and parents and people who looked at our team being the first U.S. women's team to win Olympic gold. It was something that was monumental for our sport. We truly changed the landscape of gymnastics in the United States forever. And since that time, it's only been go growing and growing and growing. So it was something that changed my life. And I have so much respect for the Olympics and I have so much gratitude for those that helped me along the way. And I just want you guys to know that you can accomplish things. My parents came from very modest beginnings. We didn't have a lot growing up. But that determination to succeed and to want to be striving for excellence every single day, that got me there. 
And I want you kids to know that you strive for excellence every day. You can get to your dreams too and never give up because there are challenges along the way that will try to make you stop, that will try to doubt yourself and you'll, it'll, it'll try to put hurdles in your, in your life. But when you overcome those hurdles, the reward at the end is so much sweeter because you pushed yourself through all those hard times. And in the end, you can stand up proudly and say, you know what, I'm a survivor and I didn't quit and I made it through all of my challenges to be on top and achieve my, my goals and dreams. So never give up. All right, next question in the back. Which one is your favorite? What is my favorite event? Book. Oh, my favorite book. Oh, gosh. I love so many books. I love to read. I would say I met a childhood uh, favorite author here today. I was so excited. I met R.L. Stein. I was a big Goosebumps fan. When I was a teenager, I, I got lost in his books, and I told him today I was such a big fan, and it was so exciting to meet him. But as an adult now, I'm, I love romantic novels and Nicholas Sparks and all that fun stuff. But I also love memoirs and um, books that are, that are autobiographies. I like reality, and I like to uh, dive into that now. Uh, and I also have a memoir out, Off Balance. Yes. Hold on, right, right back here. Yes. How did you qualify for the Olympics? How did I qualify for the Olympics? Well, back when I was competing, the rules were different. So I qualified by my scores, and then the top seven girls, based on their scores at Olympic trials, qualified to the Olympic Games. The rules have changed a little bit now, and every four years they kind of change a little bit for each Olympic Games, but at the time, that's how I'd qualified. Yes. What is your favorite ele event in the, Olymp in the Olympics? What's my favorite event? Yes. To watch or to compete? To compete. To compete. I love beam and floor. If I could really show my personality, and I love the challenge of a four-inch wide balance beam that's like the size of your four fingers here. I love the challenge of mentally and physically putting yourself on the beam and flipping and twisting and sticking a perfect landing. So, And on floor, I love dancing because I love... I love music, I love to dance, and be able to perform. So those two are my favorite. Yes? Um, what do you think is the hardest event in the Olympics? Whoa, good question. What do I think is the hardest event in the Olympics? Well, of course I'm gonna say gymnastics. Gymnastics, I believe, is one of the hardest sports in the world because of so much dedication and sacrifice. And what you have to put your body through is superhuman if you think about it. And um, I think there are a lot of very, very difficult sports out there. So it's a tough one to say, but because Sorry. I know how hard gymnastics is, I've done it myself, and, and I can tell you even other sports uh, have a lot of respect for gymnastics. Over here. Where Over is here. my, oh, right here? Oh, there we go. How old are you, how old are you when you started gymnastics? How old was I when I started gymnastics? I was this many. Do you know how many this is? I was three. I was three years old. How old are you? Five? My daughter will be five on Christmas. Yes. Can you still do a round off? Can I still do a round off? Yes, but not in my dress. I will not do it for you guys right now. Yes, I can still do my beam mount. If you go to YouTube, my shoulder roll beam mount, I can still do that which is kind of tough on the shoulders, but, but that's okay. I bust it out for my kids every now and then. Yes? What's your favorite sport besides gymnastics? What's my favorite sport besides gymnastics? I think I like ice skating. My daughter loves figure skating, and so I feel very drawn to the ice skating world because gymnastics and ice skating, they parallel each other, summer and winter games, but Figure skating is very popular during the Winter Games, and I really love to watch it. It's, there's a lot of artistry and beauty in it, so I really enjoy it. Yes? How did you react when you uh, found out that you were going to the Olympics? How did I react when I found out that I was going to the Olympics? Good question. I was super excited because five weeks before the Olympic Games, I was diagnosed with a stress fracture in my tibia. So my future was uncertain, and I was only 14 years old, and this was my goal, this was my dream, and uh, I was able to push through that injury and compete at the Olympic Games. Even though I had a stress fracture, um, I was really thrilled because my future was really uncertain five weeks before the Games when I was diagnosed, so. 
Uh, which gym did you go to first? Which gym did I go to first? Well, I started out in Chicago and Illinois where um, there was this gym club called Northbrook Square Gymnastics. And then I moved around and ended up in Texas where I trained for the Olympics. Yes. Um, what's your series called? What's the book series What's called? my series called? It's called The Go for Gold Gymnast. And I'll be signing at tent number six shortly after I get off the stage. So if you guys want to come and take a picture with me, um, get me to sign your book, I will definitely do that for you. Yes? Who was your favorite gymnast in the London 2012 Olympics? Oh, good question. Who is my favorite gymnast from the London 2012 Olympics? Gosh, there's so many. Guys, remember Gabrielle Douglas? Yeah. Well, she's a cutie pie and someone who I think just has a bright smile and a bright future. And all of the girls are excellent. I love Allie Raceman, too. I respect her hard work and her discipline and all the girls on the team because, you know, it's hard to pick one. But I also respect the girls from the other countries because I know how hard everybody works. And, uh, and so I have a lot of appreciation for them, too. Here. Where are we? Oh, here we are. How did you get accepted to the Olympic Games? How did I get accepted? Well, it's a qualification process. So I qualified in 1996 based on a competition where my scores would qualify me into the Olympic Games. Um, what was your highest score in like you, like the team? Was it, do you put the team scores together? Did you like actually like do the team scores or did you like get your own score? I, what was my highest score at the Olympics? Yeah. Was it the team? Well, the team scores are different. They do, we did have team competition, and then I did have individual. So at the Olympics, oh gosh, I can't even remember my highest score. To tell you the truth, that was a long time ago. I don't even look at my scores, really, and I haven't since then too much. But I think I remember getting a 9-8-1-2, and that was, that was when we had the scoring system out of a 10.0. So it's very different than what you see today. But I did get a 10 from a couple of judges on some of my other competitions, so that was like a big deal. Yeah. Hi there. I was just wondering, do you still keep in touch with the Magnificent Seven? And then also, what do you miss the most about gymnastics? Good two questions. Do I still keep in touch with the Magnificent Seven? That was what my team was called in 1996. So yes, I do keep in touch with some of my teammates, uh, Carrie Strug, Amanda Borden, Dominique Dawes. So there are some of them I keep in touch with more just because we all live in different you know, states, so it's tough. But a lot of us now are moms, so we kind of talk about, you know, what it was like with poopy diapers and other things now that are not as interesting. But to us, it's fun because we talk about our children. So we've, we've moved on to that phase in our lives. And um, the other question was, oh, um, what do you miss the most? What about do I miss the most about competing? Gosh, I just miss the whole competitive aspect and, and meeting um, other cultures when you're competing abroad in different countries, just the cultural exchange that you have with other uh, gymnasts from around the world and just to be friends with them and to take pictures with them and to know that we all train together and that those competitions unite us. I think that's something that I miss because I love being a competitor. I love being an athlete. There's so much, so much pride in being an athlete and competing for your country. So I miss those days and I think I always will, but there's a part of you that has to move on and now I can enjoy it for my children and watch them grow and find their passions. Yes. Um, I was a competitive gymnast. I loved watching you and I'm really interested in your series. But I was wondering, I'm a mom now, I have daughters of my own, I know you have a daughter. You mentioned a book that talks about body issues. Were you concerned at all in writing that book about introducing ideas that might not already be present for young girls who are immersed in the world of gymnastics? Very good question. And that's some, uh, the question is, did I worry about introducing kind of issues of body image when some girls may not have been introduced to it yet? And my, my concern comes from an awareness perspective. I wanted to make sure that parents who were going to buy these books for their children understood where these books came from. So hopefully they will you know, look through them a little bit and see if it's appropriate. But I believe that is a part of our sport. And if you don't talk about it, kids won't understand what's happening or what's going on. So I'm, I'm a firm believer in talking to your children openly, nipping it in the bud right away because otherwise, it's kind of like the elephant in the room. You go to a gymnastics facility, coaches are always on, on the athletes about having a lean physique, but what does that really mean? 
A lot of kids don't understand that, and some of them go, you know, the complete opposite obsessive way of, okay, everything has to be, like, very minimal, and they don't eat a lot and things like that. And I don't touch upon it a lot, a lot, but I touch upon it enough so that kids can be aware to help other kids if they see their friends maybe not eating when it's snack time because you need to fuel your body right. Maybe those are signs where you can help them. And it's more about friends helping each other to see the signs, to see that these things go on, but not so where it's so, it's so dived into the topic to where it should be anything to worry too deeply about, but, but that it exists. I have, a, I have a, uh, a gymnast who I coached who now has an eating disorder and she's in Chicago and, and she's you know, calling me from, from her, you know, from her um, therapy and she, she hasn't been able to beat it. So, you know, it's for kids like that who are struggling with it as well, that I want them to know that there is a safe place to go to. There is people that care, there are people that care, and that if we are aware, because if you're not aware, you'll never know how to address it. But if we are all aware, we can help the girls get through it. That's how you help each other through those difficult times, because people don't really know about that stuff. So that was important to me because I saw a lot of it growing up. One more question. One more question? Um, why did you go to the Olympics in 1996? Like, what state? Uh, what was the question? I didn't what, what was the state you went to the oh, Olympics Oh, what was in? the state the Olympics were in in 1996? In Atlanta, Georgia. It was at home. It was the last summer Olympic Games in the United States. And um, the summer games because the winner was in Salt Lake one City. More, one, one, oh, one, one more, we have time? Okay, one more question. Did you like being in the Olympics? Did I like being in the Olympics? Of course, I got to you know, wear the red, white, and blue and represent my country and be the best in the world at my sport. So yeah, it was an amazing experience and um, something that I cherish and will cherish forever. So thank you, all of you, so much. I appreciate your questions. Thanks for such great questions, all of you. And uh, hopefully I'll see you at my tent for the signing. If you have anything else you want to ask me, uh, feel free to ask me there. I'll sign. I'll take pictures with you guys. Okay, so come over and visit me. How about one, two, three, we go USA. All right? One, two, three, go USA. All right, thank you guys. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.